אוקיי, גוד מורנינג. פודש שבט, שבט איזו שתי תיבות שנפסל בצורה טובה. בעזרת השם. We are on the Gemara Beitza. We just got to the top of Tavchet, Tavchet Amud Aleph. So we've been discussing this idea of uh, what happens with Shechita and Kisoy Adam on Yom Tov. We saw yesterday, we saw the Machloket, Beit Shama and Beit Hila from the Gemara. We tried to explain what precisely is going on in the Machloket between Beit Shama and Beit Hila. Again, the question revolves around whether one is allowed to dig up earth in order to perform Kisoy Adam on Yom Tov. Shechita itself one can uh, one can perform which I didn't bring it today but maybe next week we'll talk about Rav Zevin as a Ma'amar in uh, Mo'adim Ba'alacha and he talks about how the different the Malachot of Ochel Nefesh so the Malachot one of them he speaks there about Shechita or Shechita in the times the Gemara was permitted now nowadays actually in, under normal circumstances it would not be permitted the reason for that is because we can, uh, you know, we don't generally speaking shecht an animal and eat it on the same day. We have refrigeration, we have freezers, Baruch Hashem. So uh, therefore, it's not necessary anymore, you know, to perform your, in order to have Simchat Yom Tov to shecht the chicken on the day. Uh, but in any event, so the question was, if you have the earth ready to cover up the blood, so then it's fine, no question, you can perform shechita. If you don't have that ready, what do you do? So Beit Shammai said, you do the shechita anyway. And Beit Hillel said no. And then the, the Mishnah said, well, if you've already done the Shechita, if you've already done the Shechita, everybody agrees, both Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel, that you can then go and you can cover up you can cover up the blood, you can uh, dig up the earth that you need to. Um, so basically we understood the Machloket in the Reisha was really about whether somebody comes to ask, Kabali Malech. Somebody says, should I, before they do the Shechita, they say, should I do the Shechita? But knowing that I don't have uh, earth to cover up the blood. So Beit Shammai said, you can say yes. Beit, Beit Hillel said, you can say no. And then we saw afterwards as well, there were a number of limitations on this. That even according to Beit Hillel, that, uh, who, who again, is Machmir in this case, like the other cases of our Mishnah, that's unusual. Normally we're used to Beit Hillel being the one who's maker, as opposed to Beit Shammai. But uh, Beit, Beit, Beit uh, Hillel here are... They're, they're machmir, but they're makel in the case whereby you've already performed the shechita, but there were a number of conditions. Conditions had to be that you already had the deker na'utz mi ba'od yom, meaning that you already had it uh, in the ground, had it ready to dig up the earth so that it won't be muktze, and that it was a fati choach. It has to be in a place where you, you know, sand, Moshe said to me yesterday, it's like sand on the beach, right? That, that's the kind of fati choach. That's what we're talking about. We don't have to crush up the earth, but it's already, uh, you're not doing, performing that melacha. And we said, what about the fact, we're going to come back to this, I'll just mention it again, at the top of Tavchet, we saw, we said, what about the fact that you're making a pit? We said, Vaha kavid guma. And the answer was, no, look, and that would be a, a uh, the melacha of boneh, building, said, uh, Rabbi Abba, the Rabbi Abba, chofer guma b'shabbat, ve'eino tzarech ele l'afra patur ala. In this case, you would be patur, not only patur, but it would be mutar, that uh, you are you are digging the pit not for its own sake but just because you want the earth that's inside so it is maybe a melachah and maybe it is mekalkel and therefore it's going to be in this case that's going to be um, allowed so 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 Rashi mentioned over there Rashi said that it was a mekalkel that was the ptor Tosfot actually says here Tosfot second Tosfot on the page he says ain't not tarich ptor he says, "Mishum davei melacha she natsrucha lugufa upatur ala." And there's lots of v'taima, but this is very strange. Why? Dim ken patur avalasu lekatchila. If you're saying the reason it's permitted is because it's a melacha she natsrucha lugufa, well, melacha she natsrucha lugufa. So you may be patur, but it's still going to be forbidden. He says, "Yesh lomar to mishum simrat yom tov mutar afil lekatchila." Ken patur avalasu means. It's it's uh, you're exempt. I there's not isur the oraita, but there's still going to be an isur the rabbanan. So in this case, rabbanan said it's mutar completely because of simchat yom tov. I feel like atchil avim tomayim ken lameli deken aot. So if that's the case, um, why does it still need to be deken aot? Why do you need it from before yom tov? Yesh lomad mikom akom ba ina enchei muchan mi be'er me'er of yom tov. We still need it to be muchan from the of yom tov. I Chachamim came along and said, we're going to exempt you from this case, from the Melachah Shainat Sochal of uh, building, 
But yeah, it has to be before Yom Tov. You have to be ready so it can't be Muktzah. So now the Gemara is going to go a little bit further, go a bit deeper into this discussion regarding Muktzah, regarding exactly what uh, ash and what uh, dust we have or what earth we're using to cover up the blood and how do we make sure that it's not Muktzah from, from before Yom Tov at all. So we said the last line of the Mishnah said, kira that the ash from, from the kira is considered Muchan. It's not considered mukta. Okay, this in itself is an interesting alakha because what, what what's the scenario? You have your kira, which again is a type of oven. Um, there's also in the days of the Mishnah, there's a tanur, which is different. What's called the tanur in the Mishnah is uh, where it has a very, uh, it's all closed up and there's a very narrow opening on the top to allow the smoke to come out. But it's, so it's much hotter. The kira is sort of uh, with this big hole on top and the pot goes inside. It's like an oven, but it's not as hot as the tanur. Uh, Perak kira, and Sefer Shabbat goes into detail about that. But the kira, so you have, so you put the wood in, and the wood is burnt up, and it turns into ashes. We're saying that the ashes are not muktza. That in itself is going to be a chiddush, because initially they are, first of all, initially you have wood, and now you have ash. So maybe there's a question here of nolad. It's a new uh, substance, which wasn't there before. Also, we're seemingly using it for a different purpose. The wood was there to, uh, to, to to provide heat to to uh, cook and now you're using the ashes to cover up the blood so that's something else so a bit of a chiddush tomorrow we'll discuss but first of all where does this kira come from until now we've been talking about you're uh, digging up earth from the ground now you're telling me Efe kira muchanu. so says the gemara Efe kira we're on the fourth line Efe kira muchan uh, Efe kira man who mentioned who, who's talking about Efe kira where did this kira come from uh, says Rashi, It's implying that it's providing a reason for the halacha which we said above. Uh, right, Shefer Kira Muchan. So says the Gemara Amar Raba Hachi Kamar the Efer Kira Muchanu. So says Rabbi, no, it's got nothing to do with the previous halacha. You should add an avav. And you should say, the Efe Kira Muchano. In other words, I'm telling you one din about uh, uh, doing the Shechita and Yom Tov. I gave that, we're talking about the earth, and we're talking about whether it's Muktza or not. So the Mishnah tells us as well, by the way, Efe Kira, you should know, is not considered Muktza. It's considered Muchan. Okay. Now, says the Marav Marav. We're going to qualify that statement. Marav Yudha Marav lo shano, ela shehusak me'erev Yom Tov. Avalusak beyom tov asu. Okay, this is what we mentioned just a few minutes ago in terms of the issue of muktzeh, in terms of the issue of nolad. So Rav Yudha Amarav says that which we say that the effort of the kira is going to be muhan, it's not considered muktzeh. That is when that's when you lit it before yom tov. Shosak me'erev yom tov. Avalusak beyom tov. But if it was only on yom tov itself that it uh, that it now became ash, that the the fire was lit. Of course, the fire can be lit on yom tov. Um, so then it's going to be a sword, then it's going to be forbidden. Says Rashi, Shosak Merev Yom Tov, Metmol Date Lave Lechomile. When you lit the fire before Yom Tov, so you intended again, Muksa essentially is uh, based on what a person's uh, what a person's thought was. We're going to get when we get to the next mission, we're going to talk about uh, in a different context. But uh, generally, we have an objective standard, but even the objective standard is based on what we expect. A person to think when we say it's a muktzen, muktzen midato. So muhan means you have it ready in your mind. So if you light the fire before Yom Tov, you you intend that uh, the wood is going to burn, that these ashes are going to be uh, useful for whatever reason I might need it. Says Rashi, avalusak be Yom Tov. If it was lit on fire consumed on Yom Tov itself, you can't say. That you had it, uh, you intended it from yesterday already, and therefore I saw. Therefore, it's going to be forbidden. So that's a marav yudah marav lo shanu el ashosak marav yom tov, aval usak be yom tov asu. But imra ve imra oy litzlot bo beitza muta. If it is still, if the ashes are still hot, and that you could still fry an egg inside, you could still cook an egg in them, then. It's going to be permitted, says Rashi. 
if you could uh, cook an egg there. Shesh adain remetz cham. I the ash have not cooled down. There's still there's a hot ash there. Then we say mutar to use that. It's it's considered muchan. Why? Demet mo beodam etzim hayu muchanim leesek ulevashav velitzlot. He says on Arab Yom Tov it was still wood, and we say the wood was ready to uh, uh, to, to to light the fire in order to cook in order to cook things. Vodenu betash me shows it. So we say now, what, so what's the issue? We say, I, it was wood coming into Yom Tov. On Yom Tov itself, you let the fire, it's now turned into ash. So the ash is going to be nolad. It's something new. It's a different substance. Says the Gemara, no, if the ash is still used for the same purpose that the wood was used, so it's still, that's what Rashi is explaining. It still stands with its original use. And therefore, it's uh, it, it's not mukta. I'm still... Uh, Still has that status that I'm that I'm willing to use it. Vodeno and Tashmi shows if I did the Hazi la Puche Bay, Mide, Litzliat Beitza, Shakile Nami or Manakle Adam. Since I did the Hazi la Puche Bay, since it's still fitting to uh, to move it, to use it in order to cook the egg, therefore it's not Mukta, and therefore you can pick it up, and therefore Shakile Nami or Manakle Adam, you can pick it up and use it to cover up the blood. And it would not be it would not be mukta. So, so this uh, din of the Mishnah of Efe Kira, what we're saying is the Efe Kira is not mukta on in one of one of two conditions: either that it was lit before Yom Tov, or even if it was lit on Yom Tov, but it's still hot and you could still use it to uh, to cook an eggs. Then we don't consider it to be uh, to be mukta. Mukta. Okay. Next says the Gemara. We're about halfway down the Amud. Here the question is going to be, here the, the Gemara now starts the discussion. If a person brought dust into their, into their house, okay, we have to remember in the times of the Gemara, it's not like uh, it's not like now. You have a nice tiled floor, a carpeted floor, whatever it is. Back in those days, dust, etc., the, the ground, that was the floor of your home. And so people would bring in would bring in dirt and they would use it for all sorts of things. They'd use it to... Uh, Sorry? Okay. Um, they'd use it to cover up the ground, or they'd use it for other purposes. And the question is, when somebody brings in the safar, brings it into their home, do we consider that that's patel, to, if it's patel to the ground, if it's all scattered uh, scattered there, then it's going to be mukta. But if you keep it, if you have it set aside for a specific purpose, so then it's going to be mukhan. So the question is, when somebody brings the safar into their home and they leave it on the side, if it's a small amount, if it's a large amount, Etc. When do we say it's muktzah and when do we say not? So that's what the Gemara now discusses. It says, um, So like this, if you brought, a person brought in um, afar, right, dust, into leginato, lechuvato, into one's uh, garden, Rashi here explains, yeah, we're talking about there's a large amount, right? Large amount of, of this uh, afar. Maybe it's put in his garden for fertilizer or, or whatever it is. You have uh, an area, uh, which is a uh, an you want to place this, uh, you want to place this dust along it on the floor. The cause the cause man should savu. I mean, when you bring it in, you have it all gathered together in a, one place, in a pile, and therefore your intent is to use it for whatever purpose you need to use it. So even though it's there to cover the floor, but you could use it to cover the blood um, because we say you, you, you have intent to use it for, for whatever you need. The Marav Machnes Adam Meloku Pato Okay, so here, what is what is Reviota saying? Saying a person can bring in meloku pato. Meloku pato is a, uh, a a much smaller amount. So says Rashi, meloku pato afar bistam v'notno b'makom echad v'oseh ba'kol tzarchav. So it's a small amount you bring. You place in one in one uh, one place v'oseh ba'kol tzarchav and you use it for whatever purposes is necessary. We don't say because it's a small amount that it's going to be batel to the floor of the house. I, even though it's a small amount, 
He says, you could still use that for whatever purpose. And you could, you could use that for Kisoy Adam as well. Darash Mazutra so there are two uh, sages called Ma there's Mazutra and there's Mazutra Rabba. So Mazutra says in the name of Mazutra Rabba, Vuhu Lo Karen Zavit. That is where you have a, it's a, got a specific place. Okay, this amount, if you bring in this Malokopato, the small amount of uh, of earth, only if you have it in a specific location and set aside, then we say you could use it for whatever. It says Rashu Ushaikhedla. Lo shatcha, not if you scatter it across the floor. The mucha milta de letzochav kabai. If you don't scatter it on the ground, but you have it in one place, so then it's proof. That's proof that you need it for, uh, for whatever designated purpose. Uba afati kama. All of this we're talking about afati or soft uh, sand. She no mechusa lo chafira velo tisha el achana. I mean, there's no chafira uh, or, or grinding or, or cutting up or, or any other malacha. It's only here a, a discussion of mukze. Okay, so Ad Khan, what we're saying is we just have some statements telling us person brings in the safar, the stas, whether it's a large amount or it's a small amount, we say that it's considered, that it's not considered mukta. So now, metive. Now we have a challenge on this from the following following idea. The uh, is the Mishnah, this is the Mishnah and Khulin. The Mishnah talks about, we've been talking about Kisoy Adam. So Kisoy Adam, the, the Mishnah said, is where you have a shochet chayav of. If it's a chaya, there are two different categories of animals. There's a chaya and a behema. Chaya generally is a wild animal and a behema is a domesticated animal, but uh, types of species of animals, not this particular one. But if for shrita, for a chaya or for an off, one has to do kisoy adam. For a behema, there is no kisoy adam. So there, there's a question here about a koi. Koi is an animal that comes up throughout the Gemara, uh, which is a safek chaya, and safek bema. We're not sure which category it falls into. It's an inherent safek. Um, some, some identify koi as maybe sort of a buffalo or some sort of a deer, but probably that's kind of the, uh, the animal. Not to be confused with uh, koi fish as a, 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 in English. We're certainly not talking about a fish, but we're talking about some type of animal. It's a safek bema and a safek chaya. So that means that when you shecht it, there's a safek whether you need to cover up the blood or not. Now, if it's a weekday and you would just do a kisoy adam, there's no problem. But again, if we're now on Yom Tov, and we don't have the, the earth ready in order to in order to uh, do the kisoy adam. So we're gonna have the we have we had a question whether you have whether you shochet chaya, where you certainly have a mitzvah of kisoy adam about whether you can do it in the first place or not. That was the machloket we saw Petin al Shamai. We get to a koi, which is a safek in the first place. So it's going to be much more complicated because even if we say uh, that, that you do the kisoy adam, you're not necessarily doing a mitzvah. It's only a safek. So the Mishnah here talks about the koi. It is koi en shochtin oto beyom tov v'im shochto en machasin et tamo. Okay. When you have a koi, we say you don't you don't uh, do like a trailer, you should not do shkita of it on Yom Tov. Find another animal to have for your for your suda. Um, the im shachto, but if you did do the shkita, so unlike what we saw before, yeah, we say ain machasin and tamo. You do not cover the blood. Says Rashi, koi safek chaya safek behema, ain shochtin oto be Yom Tov. Right, we don't do the shkita on Yom Tov. Mishum the shema chayahu. Maybe it is in fact a chaya and it needs a kisoy. Uh, and then you would not be able to uh, and then you would not be able to do uh, you would not be able to do the, the kisoy on Yom Tov as explained. That's why you don't do the shkita in the first place. The im shkato en mechazin adamo says the shema be'imahu because maybe it's a beima, not a chaya. The ain bo mitzvah kisoy, and therefore there's no mitzvah. The ain mitzvah in afar lekach. We won't allow, won't allow you to carry the uh, afar in order to perform the kisoy adam, which is not a mitzvah. So the Mishnah in Chulin tells us that we don't do uh, kisoy adam on the coin. Now, why is this a challenge? There's a challenge as follows. We said before there was a concept of Yudah Marav 
sorry, just uh, just, just Rabbi Yehuda said that a person has this uh, patov afar, that one has in one's home. If you have it in the site, we don't consider it to be mukta. We consider it that it's ready for whatever purposes you need and you could use it for kisoyadam, etc. So, and that was the question. The question was, the safar, is it batel to the floor of one's home and it's mukta? Or we say, no, it's considered separate and it's mukhan for whatever you need. So says the Gemara now, Im ita. if it's true, what Rabbi Yudha said, that you have this, uh, and, and again, we presume this is a common scenario. So we presume the case in the Mishnah is where one has this, Malokopala has this afar in their home. It's, a, I guess, it's a basic necessity you would have in those days. Just like today, you have uh, you have other things. So if it's true that that is not considered mukta, it's considered mukhan for whatever purpose you need. Then you should say that uh, you should be... Uh, you should be able to cover the blood because you have the safar. Im ita says Rashi, the yesh afar shemuchan akol tokei adam, and you have afar, uh, you have earth which is ready for whatever uh, needs a person needs it for. So afilu beiman lichasye. Then you're not doing any, uh, you're not doing any malacha. You're not transgressing uh, mukta. So what's the problem to what's the problem to do the kisoy adam? So that is the challenge. So the answer to the command, well, according to that, uh, okay, why do you have to go? Why do you have to go so far? Why can't you just say what our mission is, what our mission said, right? Use Efe Kira or use if you had a Dekena Otz. Again, if, you hold, if your question is, uh, the issue is Mukta, these are other cases whereby we have Efe, which we can use, Efe or Afar. Which we can use, which is not mukta. And says Ella bit delayed. Obviously, the the Mishnah is talking about a scenario where you don't have that. You don't have the ashes from the kira, or in the way we've spoken about, or you don't have the shabbat, which was uh, which was uh, set up from before Yom Tov. If you had that, you'd be able to cover the blood, but you don't. So therefore, Ella bit delayed. So yeah, too, this case, Rabbi Yudha spoke about, if you have, if you were to have the safari in your home, so that would be mukhan for whatever re- need you, you, you have to use it for. But you don't have it. You don't have it. That's the case of the, uh, that's the case of the Mishnah. And therefore, that, that is not a proof against, against Rabbi Yudha. Answers back to the Gemara, wait a minute, says, if that's, if that's correct, the question is, what is our Mishnah coming to teach us? What's the Kiddush of the Mishnah and Chulun? If you're saying, if you're making an Okimta now to say that that Mishnah is talking about a place where there is no Afar, which is Mukhan in the first place, well, if that's true, so my area Safek, Afilu Vadai, Namilo. So then why does the Mishnah talking about specifically about a Koi? If the case is that there is no uh, afar that is ready, we don't have efekira, we don't have a dekena utz, we don't have this uh, afar which is muhan that's okay, adam. So then you aren't, you don't have any afar which is not mukta. You can't cover the blood, not of a koi, which is a safek bema, safek chaya, or of a regular chaya. So why, why couldn't it have just said a shochet chaya? What's the chiddush in the what's then the chiddush in the Mishnah? By telling us about a koi. Iachi my area safek. Why is the Mishnah talking about specifically the case of Safek, the case of a koi? Why can't it talk also about a regular animal? So answer the back, we say, You have to read the Mishnah to say that's not uh, necessary, uh, not necessary to say. In other words, in other words, you would have thought like this. You would have thought what the, what the mission is coming to teach is we don't have to tell you that you can't do shechita of a uh, of a chaya. Because if it's shechita of a chaya, I have to do kisoy adam, that's the mitzvah, and I have no way of doing kisoy adam, therefore I'm not going to allow not going to allow that shechita to take place. But a koi, I might have thought maybe. Still, there's an Indian here of Simchat Yom Tov. If you don't check that I'm not going to have any meat to eat for my meal. So I can do the, the shechita. And even though I can't do the kisui adam, because it's a koi, because it's a safek, I could, maybe I could say, well, the simchat yom tov is okay, therefore I can do the shechita. And maybe I don't have to do the kisui adam at all. And therefore the shechita would be allowed. Kama Shmelan comes to teach you that, no, we don't say that. And even for the koi, it's, uh, it's, uh, you would not be able to, 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 to do the shechita. If you do the shechita, you can't, uh, you can't cover. 
So says Rashi here. אפילו ודאי נמי, אפילו ודאי נמי, דהה כבית הלל קיים עליהם, דאסרי, we hold like בית הלל, it says that you can't do the שחיטה לכתחילה in this case. ואפילו דיעבד, ולא דקנות. And even בני עבד, if you've done the שחיטה, if you don't have this, uh, you don't have the shovel that's ready, stuck in the ground, you can't do the כיסוי אדם. So we answered, לא מבעיה, לא מבעיה כמה. הא דנקת כוי, that we, that which it says that you can't that they mention quite specifically in the Mishnah and shochtin kol sheken chaya gemora to nakisoy all the more so of course we would say that a chaya that uh, you you can't do uh, which certainly requires kisoy adam you could not do shchita vu eno yachol when you can't ravut ashminan but it's coming to teach you that even koy as well you can't do v'lomi ba'ev vaday I don't need to teach you about a vaday okay. Um, so the challenge continues again. We brought this Mishnah to talk about to talk about that we're questioning the statement of Rav Yehuda. Rav Yehuda said that he said Machnis Adam Melo Melo Kupatu Afar Vosei Ba Kol Tzorko that a person has that we assume this uh, Afar which a person has in one's home that that is there that stands ready for whatever purposes it, it, it's needed, including Kisoy Adam, and therefore it's not. It's not mukta. So regarding that Mishnah about koi, we said you have to explain it where where you don't have it. So therefore, that is not a proof. That's not a proof against against uh, against Rav Yudah. Over the page, the top of Amud Bet, we now say v'ha midiktani seifa v'im shachto ein machasin et damo miklal b'deit leyaskinan. Okay. We explained it now. We explained the Mishnah again, Stoa Mishnah and Chulin about the Koi, that it's a case where you don't have the, uh, where you don't have the Afar at all. But now the Gemara wants to challenge like this. It says, since the Sefer, since the Sefer, what did we say? We said, Ein shuchtin, ve'im shachto, ein machasin et tamu. So when you, so when it says, im shachto, ein machasin et tamu, from the fact that if you did the Shkita, you don't cover up the blood, it seems to imply, it seems to imply what? That actually there is some afar, there is some, uh, because why would it say, Um, So so, so, so that really rejects the previous argument. And therefore we say, So we say, no, you understand that we have Efekirab, when we say, that the F, that the that the dust from the kira is muhan and you could use it for for uh, kisoy adam. We say it's muhan for vadai. It's muhan. You have it in 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 mind to use for the mitzvah of kisoy adam, where there is certainly a mitzvah, but not going to be where there is a safek, where there is a safek because it's a koi, because it may be a, a chayan and maybe a bema. Okay, so we'll stop there. We'll go. Uh, we'll pick it up from there uh, next week. Mishka, Chodesh Tov, everybody. Chodesh Tov, Baruch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.